Okay, so AT&T seeks sale for Warner Gaming Unit could fetch about $4 billion, sources say. AT&T is considering selling its Warner Brothers gaming division for about $4 billion. But if you look at that third bullet point there, AT&T is looking at divesting assets in service of $200 billion in debt. Hey Siri, what is 4 divided by 200? I'm dumb. 2%. So they're selling off 2%. Of their fucking debt. 2% by selling off Batman Arkham, which is like one of the biggest cash cows that Warner Brothers has ever had. I mean, to me, this seems kind of stupid. Now, I mean, if you're talking about $50 billion, then that's a different conversation. But $4 billion on a $200 billion debt? Wow. Okay, so AT&T is in deep shit, uh, clearly. Take-Two Interactive Software, EA, and Activision Blizzard have all expressed interest in buying the gaming division, said the people who asked not to be named because the discussions are private. No deal is assured or imminent. Two people of that have said. Oh my god, I mean, th the three worst gaming companies in the entire industry to take EA and Activision, literally notorious for their scumminess. All three of these companies are notorious for being just the fucking worst. And of course they all want to, you know, that they're the first one to take dibs. I mean, no, we're not talking about an actual reputable publisher. Granted, there's not very many in the industry, but no, it's it's to uh, take to Activision and EA. You know, that those are our choices, guys. Fucking fantastic. Now, in my prior video, which I'll link below, it's 17 minutes talking about how the game is being announced in August, it's being released in November, that's being corroborated by many sources now, and basically all but confirmed, and that the game was supposed to be at E3, and it was delayed, the reveal was delayed from June in E3 to August at the DC Fandom event, and that reveal is taking place on August 22nd. So, putting aside that... Let's talk about the business of this. So Warner Brothers is a new CEO, which lends credence to this, that he's trying to make big changes, especially that a company is deeply in debt. I also voiced an opinion that after watching K-Wing's perceptive on this was probably pretty insensitive, but I didn't realize it because I felt, well, if these companies get acquired, then surely they will all keep their jobs and everyone at W Montreal and Rock City. But I didn't really even consider that a lot of people are going to be laid off potentially if this merger happens. Now, even if they try to really maintain the same structure and the same number of employees at each studio w montreal and rocksteady it's very unlikely that some people you know in upper management or elsewhere will not get laid off that's the worst thing i mean we don't want that to happen we don't want anyone to get laid off especially at Warner Brothers montreal i mean they've had several canceled games they've built up a big staff and they're just at this point now where the, this turning point where they could start to produce games very frequently with a, such a large staff the last thing we want is some hotshot ceo from you know hulu that's now the ceo of warner media to come in and change everything up that they've been working on for six Six or seven years to try to get in this workflow so i mean hopefully that's not the case so i mean like i said it, it might have been insensitive and for, for reasons that i apologize for and did not consider but on the other hand there's also the opportunity that this really turns out to be a great thing and that they're not really layoffs you know pretty much everyone keeps their job um these studios, W Montreal and Rocksteady, remain unscathed, and they essentially become conglomerated under another company that has more ambition for the brand. K-Wing also talked about this. I mean, it's been more than five years without a game. You have access to the most amazing IPs and properties that anyone could ever imagine. Yes, I understand that games get canceled, but you also have to have a backup plan and a backup of that backup of that backup plan, and they don't have any backup plan because as soon as those games were canceled w montreal they were fucked no game for half a decade and that's the exact opposite of what you want you want to be in the case where it's like oh this game fell through okay well we've got this other one from this other studio think about how call of duty does it do they ever miss a year no and they don't really sacrifice quality some people will say that they do but i mean nothing has changed this the call of duty games if anything have only improved in terms of quality and balance from you know back in modern warfare 2 let's say so as much as people like to shit on sledgehammer and those other studios imagine if you have a rotation of three solid studios w montreal rocksteady and one other uh, let's say you got Naughty Dog to start making a DC game or something, right? And then you start rotating them in. You have a deadline. You make one game every three years. That's plenty of time to make a game with a studio of four hundred, several hundred employees, up to a thousand employees at W Montreal. And E3, a company like E3 would come in and create that model. A company like Activision would come in and make a Call of Duty model out of the DC brand. And frankly, I don't see the big downside in that compare okay yeah maybe activision pushes the studio a little bit to release the game a couple months earlier than they wanted so that it wasn't perfectly polished but compare that to getting one game every single year a new dc game like we get you know like with spider-man ps4 we get spider-man ps4 and then we're getting miles morales and then we're getting avengers imagine if we got a batman game and then a nightwing game the year after that and then the year after that 
a Rocksteady Justice League game, you know? The opportunities are endless, and if you get a studio, a, a company that I think fully acknowledges the importance of this brand and really has backup plans and is ready to commit to publishing DC games consistently, frankly, I'd be in favor of that over Warner Brothers. I mean, Warner Brothers, we've had an iffy track record. I understand it's scary, change is scary, and Again, this is totally excluding if anyone gets laid off, my tone will totally change on it. This is assuming that they are going to absolve both of these studios underneath a different branch, Activision, Two Take, Take Two, EA, whatever, whatever. And they're basically going to create more consistent guidelines where we're going to be getting games more consistently and the games are still of high quality and they still let Rocksteady and W Games Montreal fulfill their creative vision, then that's what I want. Again, assuming no one gets laid off. So we really want to avoid layoffs here. We really want to avoid being sold if possible. I think the best possible solution here is that Warner Brothers changes their tune, ups their game, commits to publishing a new DC game every year, and starts adding more studios and starts purchasing up more studios. Like you want to buy a Naughty Dog or a Rockstar type. Now, of course, you can't buy them. They're too high profile. But go one level below that of, of a Rocksteady or Rockstar or something. And who can you get to come make DC games and make them consistently for the next decade? We're not unrealistic here. We're not expecting you to make a DC game like they used to make them. They made Arkham Asylum in like two years, a year and a half. We know it's going to take three years, at least. We know that. And that's okay. You have enough studios rotating in and out, and you have Batman Arkham 5, and then you have Justice League, and then you have Nightwing, and then you have a Batgirl game, and then you have a Batman game, and then you have a whatever game. You know, you can create this cycle just like they have with Call of Duty, and I think, I mean, here's the thing. People criticize Call of Duty. They criticize that model. They say, oh, well, you know, you have to buy a new game every year. And it's first of all, it's single player versus multiplayer, which is totally different. And second of all, I mean, say what you will. I don't know about you, but every time I look at the charts, Call of Duty is the number one or number two best selling game of the year. Every single year, it's been that way for for almost 15 years. And say what you will about them, Activision has figured this out. We get new content consistently and regularly, and it's somewhat of a solid quality also comparing shooter games to story games you can't really fake a story game you know it's either going to be good or it's not the writing is good or it's not you either have troy baker and you have neil Druckmann, or you know directing the game you have the best people directing the game or you don't and in this case i think that warner brothers or activision or ea no matter who bought it would invest those resources they would hire the troy bakers of the world they would hire the most expensive voice actors the most expensive game devs they would keep continuing to pay Sefton Hill, you know, a hefty salary to be the game director at Rocksteady. Uh, of course, Sefton Hill, you know, he's developed enough game cred that he could dip and go be a Neil Druckmann at another studio and be that the guy that comes up with the ideas and that really is running the show as he is at Rocksteady, more or less. He's built up that cred, being the game director of Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, like some of the best video games ever made. Dude, he can slide in anywhere. His salary He's got a nice salary. I mean, I won't say it's millions every year, but he makes a very nice living. Okay, so you've got to really consider the totality of this whole situation. And I really do not, once again, want to be dismissive towards the scary aspects of people potentially losing jobs and this merger. That's very scary, and I hope that that does not happen. But I also don't want us to think, oh, if EA buys Warner Brothers Games Montreal, they're going to cancel the Batman game. I mean, dude, very unlikely. Do you know how many years were sunk into that game? How close it is to development? If anything, they might come in and say, oh, we want to tweak this or that. And that could either be for the worse or for the better. But the notion that they would totally scrap the game at this point when they're basically planning to release it in a few months. Therefore, the game is basically about to go gold. I mean, literally, the game is about to go gold. At which point, you know, they're not going to release the trailer until or, or officially file the game as having gone gold until the trailer's announced. But maybe the same day because it's that close. You know, they're, they're a couple months out. They're going to release this thing in five months and they're going to announce it in two months. So we're getting closer and I do not think that any Take-Two acquisition, EA acquisition, Activision acquisition is going to substantially risk what Rocksteady or W. Montreal have worked on. Frankly, I don't think that either of those companies would buy the studios if they thought that. And you also have to consider Rocksteady and W. Montreal are world-class studios. You know, they're not making pieces of shit right now. Neither of them are. That would be like if somebody bought The Last of Us or bought Naughty Dog 
and you know a couple months before they were about about to reveal last of us 2 they canceled it it's like no they're not going to just come in buy warner brothers and cancel a batman game that's almost done they wouldn't buy demi montreal if they weren't like the product they were making if they're acquiring them that means that the the company shows promise and that they might have long-term changes but in the short term they're going to boost their q4 revenue by publishing these games that will make hundreds of millions of dollars maybe billions of dollars including dlc and merchandise sales literally billions of dollars they could make back you know it, it, total profit versus you know the, the the total expenditure but i mean you could see a new batman game making over a billion dollars two billion dollars three billion dollars getting close to paying off that investment they're selling it for dirt cheap i mean selling rock setting w montreal for four billion that seems low to me um i don't know why they would try to pawn it off at that low of a margin uh i'm not an expert on the financials of the video game industry so please understand that i'm also not a moron and know that four percent of your total debt is nothing and i do not understand why they they need to do this you know i'm thinking back to a financial coach his name is dave ramsey and a lot of people call him that are in debt and they ask him if they need to sell their house and what he often says is well it depends how much your house is a part of your financial problems in other words if your house is like 60 percent of your take-home pay and you have to pay all of your money to your mortgage you don't even have enough money for food then he will say yeah you know you can't afford to have your house that you currently have so you need to sell it contrarily if you have a house that the mortgage payment is 20 percent of your take-home pay there's no benefit to selling it because it's such a small percentage it's not really your financial problem it really is more like your car payment or your credit card bill that's creating your financial problem because your mortgage is only 20 percent of your take-home pay which is not that substantial it's the same situation here in this case this four billion dollar asset of rock study w montreal it's not the problem you have a 200 billion dollar debt you acquired the warner brothers brand the movie brand which is incredibly expensive they have an entire city in burbank multiple blocks of of studio lots they have cw like there's so much under that that is the problem okay w montreal and rocksteady are not the problem rocksteady is going to turn a profit for you in the next couple years warner brothers like they're your cash cow and you're trying to get rid of them four billion dollars once again is not the problem but that's also not to say that they could sell rocksteady and rocksteady could be empowered there are reports that rocksteady wanted to make a superman game and they kiboshed it Warner Brothers did not approve it because they're like, oh, you know, I don't know if you can do it. It might be hard. Let's, you know, make a make a whatever game, a Green Lantern game, whatever they're doing. And at, at which point, if they can go to EA and EA just lets Rocksteady do whatever the fuck they want, maybe that's better. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's worse. Maybe people will get laid off and that then it's not worth it. Or maybe EA will buy them under the condition that they're going to retain the overwhelming, you know, like 98, 99% of employees of the game devs. They're going to keep everyone. There are going to be zero layoffs. And I've heard of situations like this where there are mergers and the promise is like we, you know, the, the company that's about to get bought out. They say like, we're only going to do this if you promise not to lay everyone off. And W, you know, Warner Brothers could make that arrangement where it's like you can't lay one off for this amount of time for like a, the next year. You can't whatever. And you give people a year to decide if they like the job under the new company. And that's a part of the arrangement. I mean, it might sound unicorns and rainbows, but I also think that it would be wise for Warner Brothers to look out for their employees like that. Because, I mean, dude, the game is about to be released and you're going to can someone and then let them not have that on their resume that they worked on that game. Of course, you still can put it on your resume that you worked on a game even if you got fired before it was public. But, I mean, dude, that's just poor form. I mean, they've been waiting for years to release a product finally. They've wanted to release a game. They haven't wanted to cancel these games. That's always an unfortunate thing when it happens. And they're as excited as we are, if not more excited to put their game out into the world. So the last thing I would want to see is people let go months before their, the fruits of their labor are about to be revealed and that, that euphoria of releasing something into the world that so many people care about, whether it be a trailer or otherwise, uh, has got to be an amazing feeling. And I do not want that to be squandered for anyone. So my thing is that I am in agreement with K-Wing and others that this is not good news. I just disagree with the extent to which it can be or will be doom and gloom. I am, for whatever reason, optimistic that they will not be sold. And if they are sold, it's going to work out for both Warner Brothers Montreal and Rocksteady for the better. And it's going to work out better for the fans. Because, frankly, say what you will, 
this arrangement as far as how we have been treated as fans by Warner Brothers and AT&T has not been great. And EA and Activision have many issues. Many, many issues. I could make entire videos on it. Maybe I will if they get acquired. I'll make a video about like what you need to be careful about with Activision. But they also could totally rev up programs for YouTubers to, you know, have exclusive access and like, I don't know, fucking like let us go out to their studio and talk with the devs once the game is announced and they could do shit that Warner Brothers has never done. And they could let Rocksteady make the game of their dreams instead of being like, oh, no, let's play it safe. Like, we don't want to have another game canceled. And instead, you can let Rocksteady run loose and make the game they've always wanted to make, which is a Superman game. And they can make it. And they just didn't let them. You know, that's the thing. So maybe they get acquired by a company that has more faith in Rocksteady than Warner Brothers did. That believes in Rocksteady and W Games Montreal in a way that Warner Brothers never did. You got to think about these W Montreal games, highly unlikely that they were canned by the game that, you know, the game designers and the, the top game devs, like that's their life work. They sunk two years into that. They are probably in the mindset of if at all possible, salvage the game. How can we make this publishable? How can we get this out? And what likely happened is WB corporate said, no, 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 we're canceling the game, whether you like it or not. It's donezo. You're working on this now or come up with another idea. I mean, that's that's always how these things work. Like, it's always top down pressure. The pressure in these companies always comes from the top down. Always. So you've got to think about that when you consider who is behind these decisions and why have these games have been canceled. And why is Rocksteady not making a Superman game like they've said has been their dream game? These are all important questions. And it's not nefarious to wonder if this could work out in the better for the fans, for the employees at these companies, and many others. I also see the argument that it could be disastrous for us. It could get the game canceled. It could have people laid off. It could have all these other downfalls. But we don't know yet. Um, and I really, truly could see it going both ways or there being a mixture of both of those two possibilities. It's not a, it's not a bimodal thing. It's not one either or. There are going to be trade-offs. There's going to be pros and cons, and those remain to be seen.